All right, what's up guys? My name is Coach Ethan. I'm one of the head coaches here at Hockey Now and welcome to today's video. If you remember in our last video, we went over changing the angle, uh, specifically pulling and shooting underneath a defenseman's stick. Today, we'll be talking about a different way to change the angle um, and that is the backhand touch shot. To start off, we'll have the puck on our backhand side. We're going to move the puck laterally or side to side to our forehand and quickly release the puck, um, which essentially means we wanna get rid of any stick handling, any hesitation, move the puck from our backhand to our forehand and shoot it as quickly as we can. If you remember from our last video, two of the most important aspects were keeping our eyes up and our feet moving. The main reason for this is that we want to be able to react to the positioning and to the movement of both the defenseman and the goaltender. We also want to be able to shoot while in motion. We don't want to slow down or stop when we shoot, right? Because we want to make sure that we create time and space for ourselves and that we're able to find open ice and continue to move while we shoot. There's also another reason for keeping our eyes up and our feet moving while we shoot, and that is for deception. So a lot of players have a bad habit of having their eyes down, looking down at the puck while they skate, and then when they're gonna shoot it, they pick their eyes back up at the last second. The problem with this is that it essentially tells both the defenseman and the goalie when we're going to shoot the puck. If we have this habit of skating around with our head down, and then as soon as we shoot it, we pick our eyes up, it makes it a lot easier for a goaltender specifically to react to it because he's able to guess more accurately as to when we're going to release it. The same thing applies for keeping our feet moving. If we are skating fast, we have our feet moving, and then every time we shoot, we have to either slow down or come to a stop in order to release the puck, a goaltender will be able to react and kind of guess when we're going to shoot it since our feet have stopped moving. So in order to be deceptive, we need to make sure that our eyes are up and that our feet are moving at all times when we're planning on releasing the puck. That way we can release it at any given time and it essentially becomes a guessing game for your opponents, right? Because they have no idea when you're going to shoot it. If I'm skating in with the puck, my head is up, my feet are moving, it is very difficult for the opposing team to anticipate my shot. So for the backhand touch technique, let's look at some really good examples from Nathan McKinnon and from Ryan O'Reilly. Okay, so let's start off with this clip from Nathan McKinnon here. As you're gonna see, he's gonna break towards the middle with speed, right? He gets a great outlet pass from Kale McCarr, the defenseman here. And as soon as he catches this puck, he's moving his feet, right? Right off the bat. Now, as you can see, when he starts off, He's actually, he starts off behind the defenseman for the Blues, right? He starts off behind like this. And then a couple of seconds later, he's moving his feet. And now they're all even. They're all parallel, right? We can see this here. They're all in a straight line. The reason why McKinnon is able to beat defenders is because when he picks up the puck, he's already at full speed, right? Now, if we go back to when he first picks this puck, because we got to watch what creates this play from the beginning, right? He's at full speed, right? It's hard to see here, but maybe we can watch the clip in full time. He's at full speed already moving, but the defenseman is reacting to him catching the puck, and then they have to go. And that's why he's able to create this separation, right? Not even a couple of seconds later, he's fully separated, right? These two defensemen are fully behind him. So he creates this, this opportunity for himself. He breaks him with speed all alone. And as you can see, he's on his backhand, like we talked about, and he brings the puck over to his forehand side and releases it quickly. Great goal here. So let's, let's watch this from a different angle again, catches it with speed. And an important detail to realize is, is this. So you're gonna see here, he has his feet moving, right? Feet moving. And right here, you can see the St. Louis defenseman is going to, with one hand on his stick, whack McKinnon in order to try to disrupt the play or essentially 
get McKinnon to lose the puck. And watch what McKinnon does. He anticipates this, and what does he do? He sticks out this leg here. So let's look at it here. As you can see, this whack is coming from the St. Louis defenseman, and McKinnon widens his stance, he gets low, and he protects the puck. So by the time it comes, right, he's sticking out this leg here. By the time this whack comes, he's not even he's not even faced, right? He's anticipating that, and then he moves his body into the stick, right? And at the same time, goes from backhand to forehand and shoots and scores low glove, right? So let's look from an even better angle here. Now, what I want us to realize is, is this. The St. Louis goalie is lined up with the puck right here, all right? Now, let's keep it going. McKinnon is going to move the puck laterally, and he won't shoot until here. So he moves, 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 and then look, he shoots here. So by the time McKinnon releases this puck, this whole side of the net has opened up. If McKinnon was to shoot straight on like this, oh, sorry here. If McKinnon was to shoot straight on like this, this side of the net is not open, right? Or at least a, only a very small portion of it is. But because he moves this puck to the side, he creates a new opening for himself, right? And is able to beat the goaltender far side with a quick release, right? This only works with a quick release. If he stick handles, if he hesitates, right? This goaltender here probably has a good chance of reacting and saving it. But again, as you can see here, he's bringing it over and scoring far side, right? So all of this comes together to create a beautiful goal. But a lot of players don't realize is that this is all planned out. This is something that the, the pros, the very best, already know that they're going to do before they get the puck, right? They're anticipating and effortless, effortlessly adapting to what's going on around them, right? So again, if he was to release the puck from straight on here, maybe not a great chance. But instead, he brings it over. Right, backhand, forehand, and creates a new shooting lane and changes the angle, right? That's what we're focusing on today. So let's look at another great example from Ryan O'Reilly. So let's watch this play start to develop here. Okay, puck's in the neutral zone. Now watch this, all right? So Ryan O'Reilly gets this puck. Before he even gets this puck, his eyes are... Where? Up ice, right? That's always what we want. That's why when this defender closes the gap between them, he's able to effectively react, right? Because as soon as he gets the puck, he's looking up ice. So by the time this, this defender comes, he's able to make a good area pass to his teammate. Just the small details that really count here. Now watch this, and we're going to go over this because this is, this is super important for us to get. The puck is going to go back here, right? Now, Ryan O'Reilly knows, look at this. His teammate has body positioning on the defender in front of them. So Ryan O'Reilly knows that if he puts the puck anywhere in this area, his teammate will get to it first, right? He knows he doesn't have to make a, he knows he doesn't have to make a direct pass he just has to put it in an area where his teammate can get it. And then, on top of that, as soon as he makes this play, now a lot of players will poke it to their teammate, and you know what? They might go, they might go out here. They might completely stop here. They might, you know, hesitate and go around. But as soon as O'Reilly makes this play, look at what happens. His feet are moving and he's cutting. He's cutting to open ice. And another reason, another small detail that makes this play so great is that Matthews, the defending player here, look at where he's headed. His feet and his momentum are going this way, right? 
they're going towards the outside. This allows O'Reilly to beat him towards the out to the inside because the defender is going the opposite way. So since Matthews is going this way, he cuts to open ice this way, right? And because he's able to anticipate this and move immediately, his teammate gets his puck and gives it right back to him. He makes a play and moves his feet. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now what happens? He goes backhand, forehand, low blocker, right? Just like we were talking about. Now let's watch it again from a different angle. All right, he makes two area passes, all right? Pokes it, pokes it to his teammate here, immediately moves his feet and cuts to the outside. Great recognition by his teammate here. And now look, again, the goaltender is set up square to this shot angle here. As O'Reilly brings the puck laterally, he's creating a new shooting angle. This opens up this side of the net, where if he was to just shoot it from the middle here, or sorry, from the middle here, right? This side of the net, probably not, not very open. All right, but because he brings it laterally and shoots it simultaneously, right, he's able to score this goal. Again, backhand, forehand, and shooting low blocker, which is a very, it's a highly effective place to put the puck. It is very hard for goaltenders to react to a low blocker shot. So for you left-handed left -handed shooters out there, a backhand, forehand, low blocker shot will always create a high-end scoring opportunity. So again, another great example from Ryan O'Reilly here, another great play and a great goal. In our next video, we'll be taking this concept and getting a little bit more detailed, talking about how we can use this when we are driving wide with speed against a defender. So make sure that you're on the lookout for that video coming soon. If you would like a free PDF that goes over all the key terms all the important aspects of this topic, as well as some free drills and progressions that you can use to practice this at home, make sure to visit our website, coachphilhockey.com. Also, make sure you check out our upcoming live classes where we take topics like these and really go even further in depth, really break them down, really analyze them, and show how we can take what we learn here and implement it into a real game situation. Our ultimate goal is that we wanna be able to take these concepts and apply them in our games. Again, if you have not seen our last video that goes over pulling and shooting, make sure you check that out. That will be linked here in the description. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns for us, make sure to contact us through our website or leave a comment down below this video. We are really trying to improve our classes and courses and make sure that we create the most helpful resources that we possibly can for our players. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Peace.